Hi everyone, my name's Sam, and welcome to the fourth episode of a series on this channel I simply call Technology, a show where I show you anything technology related, whether it be old or new. For this episode, I'll be taking a look at the Toshiba NB100 netbook. I will also upgrade its storage device to a 128GB solid state drive, then install Lubuntu Linux a nice lightweight Linux distribution in an attempt to turn this older, less capable netbook into something I can use as a data ingestion system while I'm out in the field recording audio and video. So let's get right to it. The Toshiba NB100 netbook was released in 2008 for around 730 New Zealand dollars. It featured a single core dual thread Intel Atom N270 processor running at 1.6 GHz, a GMA950 media accelerator video card, 1 GB of DDR2 memory running at 400 MHz, an 8.9 inch TFT display with a resolution of 1024 by 600 pixels. The out-of-the-box storage device was a 120 GB, 5400 RPM, 3.5 inch SATA hard drive. The NB100 also has a 5200 mAh, 7.2V volt lithium ion battery. The Toshiba NB100 weighs in at just a little over 1kg, and was originally designed to run Windows XP and Ubuntu Netbook Edition. I start by flipping over the netbook and removing the battery. I then remove the screws from the bottom cover. In total there's about 6 screws to remove. I don't have a magnetic screwdriver at this time. For some of the screws, I use a pair of tweezers to pull them up. On this particular netbook, the screen has to be pushed all the way back before you can remove the LED cover. I use a screwdriver to lever off the LED cover. Next I remove two small screws that secure the keyboard. Then I flip up the keyboard and see that there is a small ribbon cable connecting the keyboard to the main board. I try removing the ribbon cable with a screwdriver and realize that this doesn't work. Next I tried to remove the ribbon cable with a pair of tweezers and this didn't work either. Next I tried to use my fingernail and this worked perfectly. Hi everyone, thanks for watching so far. If you enjoy this content, please consider giving it a thumbs up and possibly also subscribing. This will help my channel to grow and reach a larger audience. Please enjoy the rest of the video. With the keyboard out of the way, I start to remove the screws that hold the palm rest in place. But before I can remove the palm rest, I have to unplug the touchpad ribbon cable. This is the cable that communicates the touchpad signals to the main board. Then I remove the inverter cable. This is the cable that powers the LCD backlight. I then remove the LCD signal cable this is the cable that sends the display information to the LCD screen. Then I remove the two small wireless adapter plugs. Next I remove the screws that hold the LCD panel in place. This allows me to lift off the palm rest and the LCD display all in one piece. With that out of the way, I can now remove the two screws that hold the hard drive bracket in place. Now by pushing the hard drive up, it lifts out easily. Now I can remove the four screws that hold the hard drive in the hard drive bracket. With the old hard drive removed, I can proceed to screw in the new 128GB SSD. This may seem a bit small but I will only use this SSD to store the operating system and if I need extra storage while I'm out in the field I'll copy the audio or video to an external hard drive that's plugged in using a USB cable. 
it was at this moment that I realized I had put the SSD in the wrong way. But not to worry, I just unscrew it again and flip it around the right way. Before I install the new SSD, I decided to take the netbook outside to blow some of the dust out with an air compressor. I start with the palm rest and LCD screen. Then I move on to the bottom cover and mainboard. I also blow some dust out of the cooler fan. I place a toothpick in the fan to prevent it from spinning while blowing the dust out. So now I place the bracket with the SSD installed into the inner bottom cover, then push down and it slides into place and connects the SATA power and data plugs. I then screw in the screws that secure the hard drive bracket in place. I then put the now clean palm rest and LCD screen back onto the main board area. Then I screw in the LCD monitor hinges. Next I plug the two small wires back into the wireless adapter. Then I plug in the LCD signal cable and the LCD inverter cable. Then lastly, the touchpad ribbon cable. I then put the screws back into the palm rest and screw it all back together. Now I insert the keyboard and proceed to plug in its ribbon cable, making sure the plug is securely pushed down. Then I screw in the keyboard screws. Next I reinsert the LED board cover and click it into place, making sure it's not going to crimp any of the wires underneath it. I now close the screen, flip it over and begin screwing all the bottom screws in. So with the new SSD installed and everything cleaned, I now start the process of installing Lubuntu. But before I start, I need to create a USB installer. So I go to my Linux Mint machine and create the Lubuntu USB installer using the USB image writer that comes with Linux Mint. I open the USB image writer, then select the 32-bit Lubuntu ISO file, select the destination USB drive, it then asks me for my administration password, I click authoricate and it begins to write the USB installer. It takes a little over two minutes to write. At this point I have sped up the video so that we can see the writing process quickly. I plug in the power plug as over the years the battery has deteriorated to the point where it only holds 25% of its capacity. I'm contemplating buying a third party replacement battery for this netbook at some point in time. Even though this netbook has a wireless network card, I'm going to use the RJ45 network connection instead. I will start using the wireless once the operating system is installed. I insert the installer into the USB port, power on the system, it boots up just fine and loads the Lubuntu installer. I select my language, then press enter to begin. It then asks me what language I would like to use for the install. Next it asks me for my time zone. I then set up the keyboard layout. Next the installer asks me what network adapter to use during the installation. I choose the Ethernet adapter. The installer then configures the network. Next the installer asks me to give the computer a network host name. I type in NB100 then click continue. I'm greeted with the username and password screen. I type in the username and password off camera. Next the installer shows me the partition screen. I decide to just go with the guided install and use the entire disk option as I'm not going to be manually configuring my own partitions for this computer. I also don't bother with any encryption as I won't be using this for my personal Facebook, YouTube or banking accounts. The installer then warns me that all the data on the drive will be erased if I continue. And of course, 
This is fine, because this is what we want to do. After this, the installer creates the partitions, formats the drive, and begins installing the operating system. Next, the installer configures the kernel and sets up the repositories. Now the installer asks me to install the Grub bootloader. This is a small application that is installed to the master boot record of the hard drive or SSD. The bootloader is always the first thing to be loaded after post and allows the computer to boot operating systems. I take care in making sure that I install the Grub bootloader to the correct drive. Now that the installation has completed, I remove the USB installer and push continue to reboot the system. The system reboots with the new Lubuntu operating system installed for the first time. I type in my password and gain access to the new desktop. Next I am prompted to install an update, so I click install now and go and work on a few other things while the update downloads and installs. Now that this netbook has booted up into the new Lubuntu operating system, I load up Firefox to see how long it will take, and it boots up surprisingly fast. Next I try going to YouTube and playing one of my videos. I'm interested to see how fast it will play the video, although I'm not expecting too much, and as you can see it struggles quite a bit. The next thing I'm going to try is imaginary teleprompter. This is a free open source teleprompter software. And if this works, then I may end up just keeping this netbook as the computer to run my DIY teleprompter. As you can see, it does quite a good job at running the teleprompter. The next thing I do is try running a game. And that game will be Super Tux Kart. Unfortunately, the GMA950 only supports OpenGL version 1.4, while Super Tux Kart requires OpenGL 1.3 or better. To my surprise, the game loads up anyway, so I start a single player race, select Tux himself, and load up a trick, and click start, and wait for the race to load. And here we go, the race loads up, and yeah. I'm not sure how many frames we're getting here, but I think it's around 1 or 2 frames per second. This is definitely not a gaming netbook. I try driving the cart forwards. It's very slow and impossible to control. But that's not to say this netbook is completely useless, as it will still work for my original intentions, and that was to use it as a mobile ingestion system and also a small computer that can run my teleprompter. So I think with that, we'll leave the video here. So this brings us to the end of the video. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. If you want to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. You may also like to check out some of my other videos.